Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. We are built for this. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Of the whole crew here at Dirt Tracks, I'm actually the only one who's been to Newfoundland before, not in the winter. So I know what it's like there. And when the opportunity for this trip came up, I absolutely dove at it. I know how good that province is on ATVs and I was definitely the one who's gonna go back. This trip's gonna be a little bit different. I'm bringing Vern with me for his first Newfoundland experience. This season, we got to hook up again with Craig at Rugged Edge, who's an amazing guy. I met Craig originally about five years ago uh, on a trip to uh, China. And uh, we got talking and he was telling me all about his business, Rugged Edge and how not only is he a dealership, but he also provides a lot of tours. Uh, we had spun off this idea a long time ago that it'd be great for dirt tracks to come and visit. Great things we offer at Rugged Edge, we do private tours, we do group group tours, we offer, you know, we, we do things for corporate groups. Uh, we can also rent an RV, we do ATV, snowmobiles, and we can hook you up. We, we can do a full all-inclusive package. So if people want to come to New Plan, we, can try, we try to make it easy as possible. We can book your hotels, we'll book your meals, and we'll even give you advice where to go on what to see and stay while you're here. Finally able to sort of put this trip together with the help of Newfoundland Tourism, and um, we're looking forward to spending the week with Greg. After uh, landing into uh, Deer Lake and getting our bags and meeting with, with Greg, we got underway on our, on our route down south. And you don't have to go any further than about a couple kilometers outside of the airport for you to start realizing how majestic is probably the best word the landscape is. One of the things that uh, I think Newfoundland is really well known for is how genuine and how friendly they are. And that level of hospitality hits you as soon as you get off the plane. And so we knew that within the first hour that this was gonna be a really, really fun uh, trip. The goal for this trip is to head up the west coast of Newfoundland unrestricted on our side-by-sides and ATVs. Starting from the most southern point in Port of Basque, heading north up through Cornerbrook, then ending the trip in the town of Deer Lake. But if you're in Newfoundland, it's gonna have all the great elements that my last trip had with people and food and lodging and all that kind of stuff. I'm really looking forward to this one. One of the major things we wanted to showcase with the Dirt Track show this time around was we finally got a missing link on the island fix. So, and again, with the new bylaw to City Corner to pass, this now opens up that link, welcomes, you know, the ATV traveler, exposed to a lot more tourist destinations, amenities, gas stations, food. Some of the options that an individual have when they're touring Newfoundland is that they can do either a self-guided tour or they can hook up with the tour provider. The, the first uh, tour operator that we were getting hooked up with was uh, Pirates Haven. Uh, Luke was able to meet both Paul and Ruth the previous time that he was in Newfoundland. And he was telling me all about them, how awesome they are, how friendly they are, and just how they're always out for the next big adventure. We met up with them in uh, Port of Basque. Port of Basque itself is a port town. I mean, the closest proximity to uh, Newfoundland to the main coast is Port of Basque to Nova Scotia. There really is two ways to do an ATV or side-by-side -side tour in Newfoundland. And the first one um, is for people who want to bring their own vehicles. There's only one way to get your vehicles onto the island of Newfoundland. So you've got to take the ferry. Someone has the option that they can either take their truck and trailer across to Port of Basque, or even better, is that they can leave the truck and trailer in Nova Scotia, just load all their gear and their ATVs and side-by-sides on the ferry, take the ferry across. It's about a six hour ride. And once you get into Port of Basque, everything is trail legal. And so one of the things that Newfoundland has really embraced, pretty much all of their now city centers have ATV shared routes. After we're done checking out the ferry, we decided to check out Port of Basque, the town, um, which is a really quaint little place. Uh, but we did a little tour around, checked out the town just to see what it was like, but probably good idea to fuel us up and stopped at Hotel Port of Basque for some lunch. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired performance. Once we were done lunch, it was in the side-by-sides, and we had a, over a 100-kilometer trip to do for the rest of the day, which is a long way on a side-by-side.
That then leaves the, the town, and it's not far before you get to an area called Tabletop. You then travel up this long, long, long trail. It's, it's nothing too extreme, but it is a really, really long pull. And so you're just continually going up and up and up. To get up to the tabletops was really neat. It was rough, it was steep. Um, we had some fun, kind of Vern and I just ripping up there. It's probably close to about 2,500 feet or so. People who live in an area always think that what they have is super spectacular. So I just go at it with you know, a grain of salt thinking, we'll just see how this is. Well, this wasn't a lie. This was one of the most spectacular places I have ever been. Uh, when we got to the top, it was like, okay, they weren't kidding. There in behind you is the sea. This is amazing, overlooking the ocean, overlooking lakes and the highway way, way down there where you know the cars are just like little tiny ants running along the highway. It was so cool. But I think the coolest part was that we were actually above the fog and kind of the clouds at that point. And as we were there, the wind picked up and the fog started rolling up over top of this cliff that we were standing on and you could see it happening. It was just, Honestly, it was one of the coolest spots I've been ever. True experience of seeing like the scenery and the vistas that we're gonna come to expect day in and day out on our tour of Newfoundland. So as we left our first day in Port of Basque, we made about 110, 115 kilometers to Pirate's Haven. Our first part of the trip ended at Pirate's Haven, um, Paul and Ruth's sort of ATV friendly trailer park and campgrounds. Well, Pirate's Haven is located in Robinson's. That area itself is known for back in the day when sort of pirates had sort of come on board to the shores of Newfoundland. And so that's sort of where the, the, the story begins. We use Pirate's Haven because of ATV-friendly uh, campground, which is not so common in Newfoundland as of right now. Uh, Paul and Ruth, the owners, I've known them for quite a few years now. They have, they're great guides, excellent cooks, and they provide a same. When, when you stay with them, you're getting an all-inclusive package. Really a cool spot, and it's got a restaurant on site. You know, they've got ATV rentals right there. It's a full-service place, and it's, a, and it's a really classy place. Their cabins are just fantastic. And we're pretty tired, so we unloaded our gear quick into our cabins. And at this point, not only tired, we were starving to death. But Paul had a real surprise for us. When he does a tour, he takes people out and does a cookout somewhere. And he can do a cookout of all different kinds. For us, though, he wanted to do an authentic Newfoundland lobster boil up. So we loaded up our gear and we headed out to this secret spot that Paul has picked out about 30 kilometers from, from Pirate's Haven. I miss how close we used to be. I'm skeptical. As we got in, we quickly started getting into some of the serious foothills of, of Newfoundland. Uh, the terrain there is, you know, somewhat typical of what someone can expect. You know, it's like a, a sandy base clay trail system that gives way to some more jagged rocks as you climb up into the mountains. And as you get up to uh, one of the highest elevations, you quickly overlook this lake. And this lake is called Mika Lake. We show up at this totally secluded private beach on a lake. It was absolutely spectacular. The water was like clear as clear can be. I've never seen water that clear in my life. It was also freezing cold for anybody who's wondering. I push the trigger without fear. We all meant to disappear. My life's been wasted by 
So as we got uh, onto uh, the trail, we met up with two other guys, and, the, and these are guys that come out and help uh, uh, Paul and Ruth uh, do guide a tour. The one gentleman uh, was uh, a lobster fisherman, and uh, he was out earlier that morning and caught about 30 or so fresh lobsters, and that's what he was bringing along the trip. We watched the fire for a little while. We'll take long boys a bit. Go for a man. Let's go. Go for a man bath right now. Well, yeah. Water well, beautiful, man. <laughs> I know from in the past with Luke, he's not a big lover of seafood. He was convinced to eat fresh cod the last time. This time around, uh, we had some fresh lobster just hauled over to the ocean within hours before we cooked it. We went in and cooked it in fresh water, not from a tap, right from a, from a lake. I knew, again, that Vern would probably eat, you know, eat anything. But uh, again, I, I truly believe they, you know, to get out in the woods and enjoy something over an open fire. There's, there's no, you can't compare the taste of anything that you're going to eat in the woods cooked that way. I'm going to go for a man bath in here. There's a hot hot tub right now. 60 seconds, like two minutes tops. They have an entire setup with food on it, tables out, drinks out, coolers. Paul's got his lobster boiling bucket out. He's making a fire. Like, it's all set up. The lobsters, and 15 minutes later, we've got boiled lobsters. So it was, if that's an authentic experience in Newfoundland, it's pretty cool to be a part of it. And, and actually, a lot of the people who come do their tours aren't seafood eaters, so they always provide something else. In this case, they had moose sausages and moose burgers. Their burger and their sausage is made over all the leftover meat that's left there that's not we put for anything else, so they use that to make sausage and the burger out of them. Right. Mine is not. I take a full quarter, hind quarter, front quarter, doesn't matter, right. and it's all made for, one's all made burger, one's all made sausage. Oh, yeah. So you get your prime. I mean, we had an incredible old. meal of sausages and lobsters, a lot of people maybe watching this segment thought, oh, these guys always get this special treatment, but that's not the case. This is a, a typical tour that Paul and Ruth put on for, for anybody. They, this, is, this is the true Newfoundland experience. And if anything, Paul and Ruth are some of the best representatives of Newfoundland, and they want to make sure that when you come and you visit them, that you get that true, authentic Newfoundland experience. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap, Start Strapped, Stay Strapped. As day one came to a close, the sun was setting, and we knew that uh, we had a limited amount of time to get from the beach over to what they call Robinson Head. The last time I was in Newfoundland here at Pirate's Haven, we went to a place called Robinson's Head, and it's right on the edge of the ocean, and it is, hands down, the single most beautiful place I've ever seen a sunset in my life. This time, we wanted to catch the sunset again so Vern could see it and see how amazing it was. We rushed out, we got there just in the nick of time, just as the sun was coming down. And as you come over the, the ridge out onto the coast, you just see the entire coastline. You, you see the Gulf of St. Lawrence, which gives its way out to the Atlantic. And up in the sky was arguably probably one of the most prettiest sunsets I think I've ever seen. The sky was rich with color of oranges and pink. And you were just looking from, from the far south through to the far north, this, this vast sunset. And arguably, like, like, where else in the world can you see such a beautiful sunset better than Newfoundland? one of the most warming feelings to stand up on the grassy fields, look out over the ocean, seeing the sunset, uh, is kind of overwhelming. And I think when I look around and see every person that we ever take there, everyone just stands and looks at the sun in complete awe. We're there for, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, but maybe it seems a lot longer because it is quite an amazing place. And it's a great way to end your first day in Newfoundland. I'm sure it's a memorable experience for anyone to finish out their first day ride and end up with that look over Robinson's head. The first part of this trip has been amazing. We've met amazing people, we've eaten amazing food, and we've seen some of the most incredible overlooks uh, I've ever experienced. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we continue our trip from Robinson's to the town of Cornerbrook where we ride right through the city on the new connector trail on our way to Deer Lake. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Argo, 
go anywhere. While new products are plenty in the off-road marketplace, falling outside of the norm is, well, not that normal. So when I see something unique and new, I want nothing more than to get my hands on it and see what it's all about. And the Mahindra Roxer is precisely one of those vehicles. Who's that? While they're not a big player in the off-road world, they are a massive company, and they claim to be the largest tractor manufacturer in the world. Mahindra sells tractors and implements, cars, off-road vehicles, owns the popular motorcycle companies BSA and Jawa, to name a few, and are also the owners of Pinaferina, a boutique supercar design firm who are currently making the Batista, a 1900 horsepower electric supercar. <laughs> yeah, Mahindra is no small player on the world stage. So now that you got a bit more of an idea of the size of Mahindra, let's move on to what I have here today. This is the 2019 Mahindra Roxer, an off-road only side-by-side -side utility vehicle but really, it's a whole lot more than that. It sits at 148 inches long with a wheelbase of 96 inches. It's 75 inches tall and 62 inches wide and produces nine inches of ground clearance. Suspension travel, well, it's not huge because this rig features a box steel frame and leaf springs. Yeah, I said leaf springs, which sit atop a solid front and rear axle. This truly is a very different off-road vehicle. Now this may surprise you, but the Roxer actually is the latest turbo in the side-by-side -side marketplace. Under the hood sits a 2.5 liter direct injected common rail turbo diesel, produces 62 horsepower and a whopping 144 foot-pounds of torque. And let me tell you, while the 62 horsepower may not be eye-opening, the industry-leading 144 foot-pounds of torque being put to the ground through a five-speed gearbox into a 373 ratio, yeah, this thing has enough torque to do anything you ask of it, including towing up to 3,490 pounds. Now to assist this big brute in stopping, Mahindra equipped the Roxer with 11-inch vacuum-assisted discs up front and then 11-inch drums in the rear, which equates to probably the most capable braking package in the industry. And inside, you're gonna find the basics you need to get the job done. A 12-volt outlet, two storage compartments under the seat, and a couple of rugged but comfy seats. Out back, you've got the option of accessory rear forward-facing seats, but stock is just an open storage space. Our particular test unit is equipped with quite a few nice accessories that I'll talk about a little later on. So essentially, it's the workhorse of the side-by-side -side world. It's hugely capable, powerful, and very outside of the box, but where does it fit, and can it do more than just plow snow and tow big loads? And the answer is quite simply yes. Yes to everything. The Roxer is a blast out on the trails. Do you cruise as fast as a conventional independently sprung side-by-side? -side? No, of course not, but this is anything but conventional. Ground speeds are lower, but fun is off the charts. The five-speed gearbox is the first stick shift in the industry, and it's so much fun. The turbo diesel whirs away and carries us up to 55 mile an hour speed limit with ease. While we may not be power sliding it through the corners, we are giggling like little boys the whole time. It's an absolute riot. It's like grandpa just gave you the keys to the farm truck, except that the farm truck is a hugely capable off-road turbo diesel beast that's ready for, well, anything. And this is where the accessories come into play. While in stock form, the Roxer is hugely capable, our Roxer has a whole host of cool upgrades that are available from your dealer. Ours has got lunchbox lockers, both front and rear, with worn manual locking front hubs. Bilstein shocks all the way around to help soften our ride, upgraded motivator tires and beadlock look aluminum rims with full-size spare out back, a soft top with a 40-inch KC LED light bar, and a massive HD winch bumper with Stinger and worn 8,000-pound winch. That's just a few of the accessories that we've got to play with. While the 9-inch of ground clearance isn't massive in the industry, the 8,000-pound winch is and will get us out of any situation that we find ourselves in. While the Roxer doesn't really fit inside of any of the standard side-by-side -side boxes, it does have its own category, and that category is ultimate off-road capability. And the only thing that you can do to come close is buy yourself an on-road four-wheel drive vehicle that will retail for nearly twice the price, but still not have the rugged trail-taming abilities of the Roxer or the compact package that it comes in, or the insanely durable diesel tractor motor, or the massive dealer-available accessory selection, or the, well, okay, you get it. It's really in a class of its own. And while at first I truly didn't know if I would like the Roxer, I've learned in a very short period of time that the capabilities are much like the possibilities, truly endless.
Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. Can-Am, we're built for this. And by Arctic Cat. Make sure you click to subscribe for even more great content on our YouTube channel. Travel stories, test rides, modifications, you name it, we've got it.